What's going on guys? Yes, it has been this quarantine that has me and my wife tackling project after project after project. And I'm sure that many of you can relate. I mean, we have had more time on our hands than, than I think we've ever had. And so let me first start by saying that I am not the handy guy. I, I don't like to build things. I don't like to fix things. It's just not my thing. And so one of the, the, the projects that I had to tackle was sealing the pavers in my driveway. My wife and I, we own our own home. And part of owning a home is the maintenance that, that comes with it. So it was this driveway that we tackled last because the thought of sealing pavers, that just didn't sound good to me. I mean, I've never sealed pavers before, but I knew one thing. It's gonna take a lot of patience and it's gonna take some, some serious effort. I mean, so here I was online, searching for and ordering my paver sealer and I was reading the description and I didn't really read up. I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't do any reviews. I didn't, I didn't ask for any advice. I mean, essentially I just didn't prepare. I, I just took a wild guess on how many gallons it would take for me to complete the project. And that's what I ordered. So the product comes in and I am ready to get the job done. So I get out there and it, of course, it happens to be the hottest day of the year so far, and I start the job, and, and I'm literally two pavers in, and I, and I realize that I'm absolutely regretting this decision to take on this project. I mean, it was backbreaking, and it was hot, and I was using muscles that I didn't even know I had. So hours later, I'm getting to that point where I'm running low on product on the sealer, and I notice that I'm only about 70% finished with the job. I'm literally running out without finishing the job. Here I had started this project and I had not calculated the needed sealer to complete the job. So here I was feeling regretful and sort of dumb. <laughs> I didn't calculate the needed sealer to complete this job. As I stood in the driveway, my mind immediately went to Luke chapter 14 when Jesus was teaching on the cost of, of being a disciple. And it was that large crowd that was following Jesus that day that got some very hard truth dropped on them. Jesus was explaining the cost of being his disciple and he warned the crowd saying, be careful. Don't, don't you dare begin until you count the cost. Who would begin construction of a building without first calculating the cost to see if they were going to have enough money to finish it? Otherwise, you might complete only the foundation before running out of money. So Jesus begins to share the harsh truth of what it really looks like to follow him. And he goes on to say, if, if you want to be my disciple, you must hate everyone else by comparison. Your father and mother, your wife and children, your brothers and sisters, yes, even your own life. Otherwise, you, you can't be my disciple. To top off what he said, if it wasn't offensive enough, he said, and if you don't carry your own cross and follow me, you can't be my disciple. Unless you give up everything you own, you can't be my disciple. What? I mean, wow, Jesus, hate my family? I mean, carry my own cross, give up everything? I mean, what, what does that even mean? So Jesus is saying, be sure to count the cost before you sign up for discipleship with him because it, it's costly. I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't want us to sign up naively and be surprised later when the cost is very high. I mean, Jesus requires upfront a commitment to the highest possible cost. So what is he expecting? That we are his at any cost. First, he is calling us to love him so much that it makes our love for our family look like hate. He is calling us to choose him over the ones we love most. That's hard. Second, he's calling us to get on a cross and it's not just a metaphor. This is a cross, meaning join me as I go to my death. So counting the cost of discipleship means realizing that authentic discipleship, it may cost you the highest price relationally and the highest price physically. He is calling us to renounce all for him, all possessions given up, all relationships given up, all of life given up. That's the expectation that Jesus has for us. And my friends, I didn't say this. He said this. Many people, see, they like to leave this part of the deal out. But I'm here to say, based on this text, there is absolutely no negotiations with Jesus. He wants all or nothing. 
He's either Lord of all or not Lord at all. My friends, there is no calculating. There, there's no saying, well, if the cost reaches this much, then I'm not interested in following Jesus anymore. Because Jesus says, you, you can't sign up that way. No, nobody signs up for 70% of what I require. I mean, that, that's not what disciples say. Just as I started the project and was unable to finish, <laughs> I hadn't counted, I, I hadn't planned. I didn't know what I was really getting into. And for that, I was unable to finish the job. Will you ask yourself, have you counted the cost of following Jesus?